the next thing we need to talk about are the network devices. Now at its simplest, remember we could just have a cable. That doesn't require any network device. But usually we have some type of device. And a somewhat kind of old-fashioned device, and the reason I say that is because it's been around since the old days, is a modem. In the old days, this is when you would actually pick up your phone, and if you want to talk about the really old days, you'd put it into some kind of a rubber coupling, and you would dial a phone number, and it would make what they call CNG tones, little tones across the lines, and the computers would connect and they would talk to each other using a regular phone line. Modems then progressed, and they became actually internal, another card, just like a NIC, sitting inside of your CPU case. But you still connected a phone line to it. All kinds of issues with that. They were fairly slow, and they also tied up your phone line. So we've come a long way. But now we actually have other types of modems, like a cable modem. If you get your internet connection through your cable TV provider, then you have a modem, but it's a cable modem, using the cable line instead of the phone line. So basically, a modem is just a device used to connect a computer to another network-enabled computer, usually in a wide area network. In other words, I'm usually dialing out of my house and to some other location. One of the simplest devices you can have, if you're setting up something like a home network especially, is called a hub. Really, this is just like when train tracks come together and you can exchange trains by turning it around and pointing them in a new direction. The hub simply has ports for the Cat5 cables. And by connecting cables into the hub, you therefore connect the computers. This is the simplest type of connection. Because when I send information out for my computer, that hub simply forwards that on to everybody that happens to be connected. There's no control, if you will, with the hub. Hubs are very inexpensive, and they don't require any knowledge, because it really is just a port into which you can plug two or more Cat5 cables. When we move to a little bit more elegant devices, we have things like switches or routers. Now you may hear a router if you have DSL or cable, because what they send you may be a combination of a router and a modem. Switches and routers simply manage traffic, whereas a hub does not. It can be either between network segments, like between my HR and my sales group, or between New York and LA, or between my office and the internet. Both switches and routers help reduce traffic because it doesn't send out the message to everybody. A router, for example, will say, oh, I know where that should go, and I'm only going to send that over one leg. In other words, if it's only supposed to go to Miami, it's not going to send it to New York or Dallas. It also helps avoid collisions because it's routing the traffic, in this case the network traffic, where it needs to go. And it does so intelligently. That's different than the hub, which is very passive. We're not going to get into much more detail about that, but I did want to introduce you to the terms switch and router because you might hear them in casual conversation or if you have home internet. Just a couple more things that you might hear. One is called a gateway. A gateway is simply a mechanism to interconnect different types of networks. This may be important, for example, if you want to send an email to somebody who's using a Mac or an Apple platform because they might be speaking slightly different languages. And lastly, one that people are becoming very familiar with these days is something called an access point, specifically a wireless access point, or a WAP. This allows me to connect to a wireless network, for example, using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So I might be able to go down to my coffee shop with my wireless laptop using their access point and connect to the Internet. So let's put it all together. What does all of this stuff mean? Well, each computer and printer and other devices is going to have a network interface card, or a NIC, if it's going to be on the network and not connected to another computer. Each NIC is connected to a hub, or something like that, via a Cat5 cable. The hub is then connected to the server via a Cat5 cable. Routers are going to sit at the server to help direct traffic in larger environments, probably not in a home or probably not in a small business. The servers will then use high-end connections to transmit to distant geographic locations using phone lines or other technology like satellites and fiber optic cables. And just to throw in a little bit of mobile technology, a visitor to the same office might be able to connect her laptop to the network using a wireless access point and